Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Enter the Ether, the podcast all about the, I can't even say upcoming, the third-person MOBA <laughs> ethereal Clash of Souls, very ambitious game. I'm your host, The Man Goose. Joining me, as always, is my friend, co-host, and just all-around swell guy, Jelly Knees. Thanks, Man Goose. How you doing, man? Doing Good great. I really enjoyed the uh, community corner you guys put on on the first, even though I was late. Yeah, Mangoose, jeez, I saw you. I saw you come in right as we started the Q and A section. You're like, I'm here, <laughs> Mangoose. You literally missed most of it. I missed all the things. I missed the everything. <laughs> it's okay. I can rewatch it. No, you're not there. You're square, and that means it's not oh, okay. Oh shit! I will already rewatch it. Do I have to go to a real jail now? Yes, absolutely. Shit. Nobody reads my announcements. Nobody watches my community corners. Man, what am I gonna do? <laughs> man, I had forgotten all about it. I was. Knee deep and super auto pets, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, yeah. You're excused this time. Oh, okay, this thank time. you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot, a lot was announced during that community corner, including an another. Um, are you guys calling this a stress test, or is it just a free weekend? We're just calling it an open weekend. I, I think stress test is going to be used several times because that's what we've done already. But yeah. We kind of have done that, and that is definitely part of the open weekend, but it's more of a just an open weekend than yeah. anything. So no restrictions, no keys. Just if you want to come play Ethereal January 21st, 21st through the, through Friday the 22nd. through Sunday. Yeah. So it'll be the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. Oh, okay. Right on. So yeah. we get three days of Ethereal this time. Very nice. Yeah, Mangus can't complain anymore, saying he wants more Ethereal. <laughs> oh, I will complain. <laughs> I will. Um, so yeah, great opportunity. If you guys have been looking to play this game, I know a lot of people had to work the the last weekend. Hopefully, they don't have to work this weekend. Um, I know we announced it, and the first person in chat, literally the first one after, that spoke after we said something about it, goes, "I have exams that yeah. weekend." <laughs> like I was like, "Great, thank you." <laughs> the cephalon something, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> poor guy, poor guy or girl, whatever they are. Yeah, I feel bad for him. <laughs> oh well. At least, you know, they, don't, they can't have exams all three days. <laughs> I agree. You know what? Just just bail out of school, play Ethereal instead. Yeah. There you go. Problem solved. So that was probably the biggest announcement that came out of the Community Corner is mm -hmm. Open Weekend. But you guys also talked about an upcoming myth in their kit. I was about to say hero. And uh, yeah, it's Exial, uh, Malaya's brother, another Reaper class. Mm-hmm. The assassins yeah. of Ethereal, he, sort of. And he's, he's just going to be an assassin. Like, he's yeah. not going to mess around with that at all. He's going to be the first true hardcore assassin in the game. And it's going to be really cool to see how that shakes up everything then they're in as well. Right. We're, we're going to go through his abilities and talk about him here. But the one that I want to just immediately talk about, his right mouse button, which is your risk reward ability. Mm -hmm. So what this does, it converts... All of your damage to magical damage that deals percent health damage, and but you can't cast during this. Now, is this just a straight up it says that you can you can change this over after six seconds, right? So yeah, so you're gonna press the but the ability, it'll have a duration of some kind. Um we said ten seconds is what we're looking at right now, but that'll okay. be balanceable, of course. It'll have the ten second duration, and for the first five of that you will be locked in. Once you press the button, you're locked in. You can't do anything. Then after that initial five, you can cancel it early if you want to go back to your abilities, or you can wait out the rest of that five seconds and get the full use of those empowered basic attacks that are now magical power instead of physical power. Okay, right on. I was thinking it was just a full-on stance switch. Like, no more abilities, but you're going to hit a lot harder <laughs> for a while, you know? Yeah, so it's, it is and it's not at the same time. That's, it's... I mean, 10 seconds is a pretty long time for an ability to last. That's true. Um, and But locking you in for that first five is that is the downside of yeah. if you didn't use your abilities, you then can't. That includes your ultimate, too. That's not just basic abilities. When you press this, you're effectively silenced, but you can still basic attack. And so that's the, the really the big caveat to it. And... One of the abilities you're going to want to use, and we're kind of work, I'm kind of working backwards through these, <laughs> but on his R, which is not his ultimate, his R is just usually a movement ability in Ethereal, and this mm -hmm. one is also a movement ability, but 
It also makes you go invisible. An yeah. invisible assassin. <laughs> it's like Hooray. we just talked about on Enter the Ether invisibility mangoes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, you do um you go invisible and you it, but you dash forward first. So it is still a dash, but after which you uh you gain that invisibility and you deal bonus <laughs> no miss. Bonus magic damage on the next basic ability, a basic basic attack or uh, or ability, and it can crit. So the, can the ability crit too? If the ability can crit normally, then yes. But the okay. basic is is the main one that that's there. Um. So yeah, this is his movement ability. Like you said, it's also going to be how he's able to get around unseen more often than not, and it resets when he gets a kill as well. So this is really trying to emphasize that go in burst down damage and then if you succeed giving you an option to get out if you fail you're kind of a sitting duck for a couple of seconds there yeah i really like that portion of it um it's kind of like um in fault you've got i think it's called bloodlust saber or something like that but it just mm. gives you a, a, sh a short dash but it resets whenever you get a kill so mm. it's just nice to have a blink that resets on kill so you can you can really pull off some crazy shit like jumping in on top of somebody taking them out and then you know, continuing forward to, to for, the, for the entire team or like escaping a tower or something like that. So um, a few questions I'm sure people already asked and I'm sure you guys have already given the answers, but I'll, I'll, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> when you're invisible, if you get hit while you're invisible, d does that bring you out of invisibility or is it just you attacking and, and, and using abilities that cancels your invisibility? So for right now, that is the idea is that when you're hit while you're invisible, is that it will likely reveal you in some way, whether that be temporarily or you're just permanent, that that is knocking you out of invisibility. We haven't quite decided. Um, but so it, but that's something that we feel has to be looked at constantly once he's first implemented into the game. Because he is our first invisibility in the game, it's going to be very crucial that we get it right. Because it could very easily become Kalari and Fault when she first came out. Yeah. In that she, her invisibility was oppressive because she was the only character that could do it. Partly because people didn't ward, but that's, but being the only character that could do it and having not enough downsides to it for Kalari herself then made it more oppressive to the enemy. And that's something we have to constantly look at and iterate on depending on how it's feeling and working and right. all that good stuff. Yeah. I just, in other games that I've played that have that mechanic where if you hit somebody that's invisible, it reveals them. It's just very rewarding to be able to predict where you think they are, throw like an ability or a basic attack out that way, and then reveal them. Uh, that That's very rewarding on your end. It might suck for Exiel, but Exiel. And what, how do you say it, Jelly? Exiel. So it like might you, suck for you... Exile, but... <laughs> You did it before once. You called it, and I can't unhear it. And now every time I see his name, this is what I think about. <laughs> is you called him Sexiel once, and that <laughs> sticks in my brain. But that if you take the S off of that, Exiel. There you go. I've also called him Abman Mix Six Pack. I don't know if that'll, <laughs> that'll stick or not. We're just going to give everybody nicknames. Nobody's going to be I who mean, they are anymore. We've already got Seafoam Jesus, so... <laughs> I mean, Malaya is eye candy for those who prefer women, and her brother mm -hmm. is eye candy for those who prefer <laughs> men. Like, uh -huh, absolutely. <laughs> what a what a beautiful family there. Yeah, seriously, we're gonna look at their parents, and they're gonna be the most gorgeous people too. It's gonna be like, what the heck is this nonsense? I, I guarantee they're not. It's usually like the really ugly parents <laughs> that produce like beautiful kids. You know. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> let's get a let's put like make that like part of the lore. They got ugly ass parents. <laughs> Their parents were the ugly ducklings of their tribe, and then Exhale and Malaya were born. That's why they were outcasts. They came from a tribe of ugly people. There you go. Right. So there they were go. considered ugly, but... I love it. I love it. We'll switch up the ugly duck, ugly, ugly duckling syndrome. And just um, do it that way. All right, so let's... I'm not going to get into his ultimate yet, so let's, let's okay. move to another one here, though. Um, his passive... Allows for mm. true sight it, once you've dealt enough damage to somebody. Yeah. Is this like a damage threshold in, in a certain period of time or? Yeah, it'll probably be just as an example. This isn't going to be the exact numbers. If you deal 500 damage in three seconds, you gain true sight on them, right? And so it's just X number by X time and then true sight for a duration. Right. 
And uh, as Skifter was saying, that makes Exiol, Sexiol a counter to himself. Mm-hmm. In a world where mirror matchups exist, absolutely. If yeah. they have, if you're an XL and you can burst down theirs, and then tries to use Shadow Slip, you then have true sight of him, and he's revealed to you and your team, which is going to be huge. And it also combos well with Dante because a lot of people mm -hmm. can get out of that vision radius. With if if Exil has true sight on them, they're not going to be able to. So if he deals a significant amount of damage and they get away, Dante can follow up with the uh, with the base cannon. Yeah, absolutely. Take him down. And that's one of the hardest parts is people can get away, but then not having vision on them makes it impossible for Dante to hit. He's got to take a guess at where they are. Yeah. Whereas this, yeah, like you said, it's the perfect way to combo that up together. Cool stuff. And then let's see his Q. This just seems like a, a forward facing uh, point, point of cast AOE. Yes. Yeah. He stabs straight um, out and then scissors his blades out or something like that. Yep. That's exactly it. So he'll stab straight forward. If he hits somebody in that, that's great. And then he'll do a slash outwards. And anyone, then it's like a cone in front of him. Um, that'll get hit. Or not a cone, like a semi, a half circle in front of him. That anyone in that half circle gets damaged. So if they get hit with the initial stab, they're technically taking two instances of damage from that one ability. Right on. And then his E, which I think is really interesting and really cool. He flourishes his blades in front of him and... Um, parries all incoming basic attack damage and yeah. builds a shield for all, for all the damage that he parries. So this is usually an emote for people as you start, they start <laughs> spinning their swords. It's an actual ability for sex eels that he can parry. And I mean, this is going to have like, I love all the outplay capabilities of ethereal and this is going to have a, so much outplay involved in it. Like, especially a, I can imagine a Dante hitting his right click and boosting all those and shots. Just, boop, there you go. And then, yeah, just no damage, and you get a giant ass shield. So the the important thing for that is that at the current moment, it is designated to only parry melee basic attacks. Oh, um, really? Yes, that's something that we're gonna have to look at because that could be that could be useless, or it could be super good, right? Yeah. And so it'd be plenty. Um, so that's the current iteration of that ability. But I would love for it to it block range projectiles as well just make it a basic attack counter versus i think it should abilities be. are effective i think it should be. i agree with you i think it, i i would love to see that change but it's gonna be depending on the rest of his kit he may not need that much to be that strong <laughs> yeah. so it's gonna be it, it's a point of balance for sure and this does deal damage if you catch somebody in the area yeah i believe so i don't know with 100 certainty but i do believe so yeah that's that's what you said during the community corner if that's what was said then yes <laughs> Yeah, I think this is just so cool. This is going to be yeah, so yeah. cool. Yeah, okay. I, I'm looking at the image now. Flurries his swords in front of him, dealing physical damage for a few seconds. Happy Jesus. <laughs> yes, I am a happy Jesus. And... No, you're from Jesus. <laughs> Speaking of Acheron... Uh-oh. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so <laughs> his, his ultimate ability, and this is kind of ties into what we were just talking about before the minions, was implementing archetypes correctly and i like what you've done with his ultimate so you can't he can't so if you don't know anything about exil he's got like a a demon or something inside of him he's kind of two people and um his his ultimate two is one he throws shade out which is like the eviler side of him and the shade if it hits somebody it enters their body and they get stunned and then you can teleport to shade and deal damage to them and if it kills, if it, if they're below a certain threshold, it executes them and it resets mm -hmm. the cooldown of two as one. So I think this is done really well in that you actually, um, <clears throat> Skifter was talking about this during the community corner. You actually have to expose yourself to the damage in order to make this happen. You have to hit a mm -hmm. skill shot in order to make this happen. So this isn't going to be an easy thing to pull off. And with Grognark coming with his range cc you know it's going to be very obvious where he's going to be teleporting to you might be able to just shut him down right then and there yeah, absolutely and that's a good a team that's watching for xcl to come in if they see that shade hit one of their allies then they just have to basically hold their cc and just wait mm -hmm. like do it i dare you to go in on that please like <laughs> but and that's where every, every yeah 
every XEL player is going to be the stereotypical, like, my mind's telling me no. <laughs> you're going to want to do like, it. You're going to want to yeah, do like it. You're going to want to press that button so bad. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if it's hard to hit and you actually hit it. You like, you can't just waste that. You can't just waste that shade <laughs> out there stunning people. But at least they can't. They can't be the one that stuns you if you hit them with shade because they're going to be stunned yeah. themselves. So I think this so, is done really, really well. It it is going to be super fun to play. Like I think you're the nail on the head saying like his outplay potential and like the moves he can make against people is huge. And it's seeing good XELs and bad XELs, you're going to know the difference. Like you're going to be able to see very clearly which is which. Yeah, I, I can definitely see him throwing shade out on somebody, but then attacking someone else. And mm -hmm. while while everybody's focused on that shade target, thinking he's going to teleport over there, he's just killing somebody over here, you know. And he just never and, teleports. Yeah. And depending on the duration, you could also do you throw shade out on someone, shadow slip to somebody else towards somebody else, drop your burst damage. Mm -hmm. Then when their whole team turns to jump on you on that other person, then you activate shade, and pop over to the new guy, pop your right click, and then just melee basic uh, this guy. It's like it's the potential for combos is huge. Yeah, he's going to be cool. He's going to be very cool to play. And he's going to be able to climb shit because he's a Reaper. Mm -hmm. So you, you got to watch the shade coming from on top of rocks and stuff. <laughs> oh, that's going and, to be cool. Hey, dude, the, we're, the potential of an Invis character that can climb rocks like that is really interesting by itself. Yeah. And, and that's part of the huge balance that's going to have to be done on it is there's going to be there's going to be some unforeseen interaction. I guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, there was already um, playing against somebody was on Malaya, and they were just running along the rocks, trolling our team, and, like jumping <laughs> from rock to rock, and nobody could hit them. And it was like, God dang it. <laughs> yeah. And if they're invisible too, ugh, forget about it. <laughs> forget no, because then it. it'll feel better because you can't see them doing it, and yeah, jumping true. rock to rock above you. <laughs> that's true. They're not rubbing it in my face as much that I can't mm -hmm. can't do anything to them. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about this hero or myth i'm really excited about sex eel um didn't think i would be but yeah every time you guys release a kid it's always like holy shit like like they they, they you guys said that they were going to get a lot more involved and unique and they they sure as hell are they sure oh, yeah. as hell are because <laughs> i mean we we'd say that the 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 initial seven are kind of basic but they're not they're really not that basic when it comes down to them I mean, there's there's some basic they're... style abilities but there's always like a unique twist there mm-hmm yeah, they're fairly simple to pick up, I think, is the, the basicness of them. Yeah. Is that once you understand how, like, once you use the ability once or twice, you go, okay, that's how it works, and it's easy to go from there. Right? Whereas something like someone like XEL has way more combos on top of that, that it's not just as easy as using the ability once and understanding. There's a lot of nuance that you're going to have to understand for each of his abilities and using them effectively. Right. Yeah, it's going to be cool. Um... I think that's about all I had for sexy old, unless you had anything else. Uh, I think that's it. I'm just really excited to get him in the game as soon as possible and get him into everybody's hands. Yeah. Unless they're against me, in which case you're not allowed to pick XEL. I need you to pick anybody else. <laughs> so what happens if he throws shade at Malaya and she pops a bubble? Because that's not really CC. Yeah, it wouldn't be considered CC. So she'd, she'd likely, the normal effect would likely happen. Oh, hmm. That's crazy. That'd be a the fun. thing I it like I said, there's gonna be so many interactions like that where it's gonna be interesting to see how it works. Because like if Grognark throws a rock at him as he's mid dash, what's gonna happen there? What takes priority? What like all these things? Being able to figure out what they all do and all that good stuff. Yeah, I'll tell you what I want to see. Here's what I want to see. I want to see okay. him throw his shade into somebody. Then Iran grabs him, throws him off the edge, and then he tries to teleport them. To and you just to see his shield flying you along. See him, ah! It's going to happen. You know it is. Yep. <laughs> that, or he's going to nail it as soon as they back, and he'll end up in their fountain. Yep, like exactly. You see, you see Kalari do that all the time. Yes. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Good times. <laughs> and uh, something else you guys talked about, and it was weird, because I felt like you were reading my mind as I was watching it. <laughs> the stuff that you guys were saying. You were talking about the results of the uh, of the poll you guys did at, at the end. Mm -hmm. You had, like, a... Was a ninety four percent approval for like did people have fun? Yeah, yeah. 
which if that was on Steam, that would be overwhelmingly positive as yeah. far as Steam reviews. So I was really happy to to, to see that because I know I know a lot of people had a lot of fun, but there were some people that just it wasn't for them. Like they just mm-hmm. couldn't get the hang of it and and they just moved along. So I'm really happy to see that so many people actually did enjoy it. And the and then um but only fifty seven percent feel that the game is ready for release. And this is kind of where you guys were reading my mind. As soon as I saw that I was thinking, well ninety four percent had fun, but not everybody's but still not everybody thinks it's ready for release. That means they know there's problems with it, but they still had fun with it, which I think mm-hmm. is a huge, huge positive, even more than the 94% approval like the, of, of people having fun with the game. I think that's an even bigger deal that people under, that understand that the game isn't even near its in-state goal of being you know perfection yet, but they still think it's really fun to play. And that's a yeah, good sign. Absolutely. And that's, and I said it on this, the live stream as well, is it's really cool for us as well to have people be honest about that. That it's not just a, I thought the game was fun, so yeah, it's ready to go. Yeah. Right? Like, it's actually that they're they're analyzing even deeper and saying, like, no, it's got its issues. I don't feel like it's ready for that next phase yet. But like you said, despite all of that, still having fun, which is huge. That is, that is for us, seeing that is a really, really good thing. And it's encouraging for us, too. Right. Yeah. I'm actually surprised that there was 50% felt that the game is ready for, or 57% felt that the game is ready for release. I mean, that kind of surprised me. I think if we were talking 15, 20 years ago, a game in this <laughs> state would be ready for release, but anymore, you've got to, you can't release a game with so many bugs and stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't know, Spellbreak released in a pretty incomplete state, but that was a paid early access sort of thing. I don't know. It's hard to tell, man. I think with the, as long as the game's fun, It'll be fine, I think. Mm-hmm. And that's, it's a constant balancing act, right? Of figuring out what the, because perfect is the enemy of good, right? So if you spend all your time trying to make the game perfect, it'll never come out. Right. And to an extent, we've already seen that. With right? the, the last, Yeah. With the last four years, it is, has definitely been the concept of perfect is the enemy of good, right? And it caused further delays and further issues and all these things that had to be changed. And so getting the game into people's hands, even in a, in a just good or fun state, right. Um, is super important because it gives everybody the concept of where things are at. It's not just no, it's no longer taking the devs word for it of like, you know what? It's not ready yet. Right. Like, cause that's, to an extent always feels bad when a dev tells you the game's not ready that you've been wanting to play for so long. That's that's hard to hear. Yeah. Um, but this is people were able to go in, have fun, but also still agree that it's not ready yet. So that's a cool a cool metric to see from our community. That 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 was the response. And I, th- I think this next open weekend, as we're calling it, will give you even better um, feedback. Because I think mm-hmm. a lot of people, the the stress test. You know, people were a li- there was a lot of people on the fence about Ethereal. They didn't know whether they wanted to like it or not. And mm-hmm. then after the stress test, after you know people were streaming it during the test, people been releasing videos after the test. It's piqued a lot of people's interest back in Ethereal. Like they were like, "Oh, holy shit, this game actually is a thing." It is. It's, it, yeah. it's play- <laughs> like, "Oh, I forgot all about this game." It was supposed to, and like, "Holy shit, they actually you actually can fly. You actually can break parts of the environment." You like people are kind of getting back on board with ethereal and another open weekend like this will get i think you'll probably have a lot more people this time around than the last even though you already yeah. had a substantial amount that the last stress test yeah and that's that's the hope right is to get as many people as possible in there touching the game getting a feel for how it works um and being able to leave the feedback then thereafter because we'll do another survey after this open weekend in a similar instance to we did this one mm-hmm Awesome. I, yeah, I can't wait for it. Can't <laughs> wait for it. I want more more people to play. Um. Oh, I know what. I know what question slash suggestion I had about Sexual. Um. Oh. Can you guys uh, license the rights to I wear my sunglasses at night for his <laughs> <laughs> for his theme? <laughs> There we go. Yes. I'll get right on that, man. Goose. <laughs> I just think it would be perfect for him. I don't know why. He doesn't wear sunglasses. 
<laughs> you just gotta have them on his head. We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll get our summer bash uh, XEL skin, and he'll have the sunglasses <laughs> on his head. Yes. Oh, that that's perfect. I love it. <laughs> uh, a, a summer fun sexual is definitely going to happen because he just he already looks like he's going to be wearing board shorts. Hundred percent. Yeah, and literally <laughs> that's what you need to do: board shorts, and then give him like maybe even give him the uh, suntan <laughs> lines on his cheeks and a pair of sunglasses on his head, and he's he's done. There you go. Boom. There you go. Easiest skin creation ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, people would love it. Give him some pool, pool noodles instead of uh, swords. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, please. I love that. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, damn. I think that's about all I had to cover for this week. A lot of fun uh, stuff, yeah. though. I think, I mean, if you want to go over the other two questions that we went on that had graphs for, or do you want to just leave those? Um, I mean, you guys already covered it in the community corner. If, right. you, if you want to cover it here, we can't, we certainly can. That's up to you. Doesn't bother me, man. All right. <laughs> so, I mean, I'll, I'll have that linked. Wait, is this going on my channel this week? Or yes. Your... Okay, yeah. It is. All right, I'll have it linked in the description below the, the community, link to the community corner so you guys can watch it for yourself. They had a pretty extensive Q&A, so if there's a lot of, you might mm -hmm. have some, uh, find out some interesting information via that if you if you want to take a look. But um, I think that's going to be it for this week. Jelly, you got anything to plug? Uh, just my Twitch stream per usual, twitch.tv slash jellyknees. We do a Marvelous Monday at eight o'clock mountain time every Monday night. And yeah, it's always a good time. What about you, Mangoose? Uh, I just got to remember, I got to set an alarm or something because I forgot last time. This guy, dude, I know, the worst. <laughs> Stunt hit me up. He's like, where are you, where are you at? <laughs> <laughs> but all right, man. Yeah. Uh, oh, happy new year, by the way. Yeah, happy new year, everyone. Yeah, we kind of <laughs> forgot. Whoops. You know. <laughs> uh -oh. Anyway. That's uh that's gonna be awesome. I hope everybody comes out and uh that's gonna wrap it up. But I hope yeah, I hope everybody comes out on the was it twenty second, twenty first, twenty second, and twenty third. Twenty first, yeah. And finally join us as we enter the ether. <laughs> again. Enter the ether the again. Time. <laughs>